So the 2019 Threadripper lineup is official, and official today without any further prodding from Dr. Ian Cutrus. AMDs laid their cards on the table. This is what you're getting for the rest of the year. And these are some expensive cards from AMD's deck. But, you know, I tried to warn you guys. I mentioned this over and over in the latest episode of Broken Silicon. You know, sometimes you can't say everything Literally, I was not allowed to say certain things like the exact price, but I couldn't have given bigger hints as to what's going on. And I will just emphasize that really quick in the beginning here. If you want to upgrade now and you don't need a bunch of threads, get those 3900Xs before they go back out of stock. Load up on PCIe 4.0 SSDs. Prices will come down, I would say, quarter two next year, but for now... The holiday rush is about to begin, so grab what you need now. But it's not all bad, and that's what this video is about. Putting perspective on what's going on. To be honest, I'm always the optimist, aren't I? I was really insisting that if AMD wanted to, they could price these Threadripper processors lower than you'd think. You know, $1,000 wouldn't have been insane. It, they charged 1000 for the 16-core 1950x when they had 500 for the 1800x but that was a different world that was a world where amd was incentivized to pump out as many global foundry chips as they can and they were at best taking a digit or two you know single digit or two of server market share that's just not the world we live in and if everyone will remember they have threadripper this generation on their roadmap for a while, and then it disappeared. Remember, for a couple months? AMD was considering not even launching it. The fact is, AMD has no incentive to launch good price performance HEDT chips of the newest generation when they are getting Epic win after Epic win. Now Netflix may be signing on with the latest Epic processors. AMD is not aiming for up to 5% server market share now. They want to get to 10%, 15%, and eventually 20%. And the demand is there if they can keep up. So that means AMD just doesn't have extra processors lying around. And if they are going to sell them to consumers, they're no longer a $20, well, really, they used to be, what, a $15 per share company back even just a couple of years ago. No, AMD is now worth almost $37. And yet, if you look at their earnings, they just barely met them, right? So if they're just barely meeting earnings, they've got a good valuation, they need to continue to increase margins, and those margins are going to have to come from consumers. It can't just come from selling more to the server market. So that's just the situation we're in now. But you know what? Let's say you want a $1,000.24 core. Then buy one. Here, go buy one. <laughs> the 2970WX is now under $1,000. And... Drivers have matured. There is better software now coming out in Windows updates. It's not a horrible gaming processor. It, even at launch, it typically did a bit better than the 2990WX. If you need this predominantly for creation, and you're also going to game, as far as I can tell, and it is hard to find some of these benchmarks, even in Far Cry, which is notorious for not using a ton of cores, it works fine, guys. This 24-core works fine, and it is under $1,000, and its motherboards start at about $300, and they're pretty nice motherboards. So if you're predominantly a creator, this is what you should get, and you can still game just fine. So there's a good option for creators on a budget who might game, but it's certainly nowhere near their priority, you know? At least from what I can tell, in the latest benchmarks, the 2970WX games around 100 frames per second just fine, and it'd be rare to find a game that won't stay above 60. Most really intensive creators are probably using 60 hertz professional monitors. Anyways, there you go. And you know what? It's 917 on Amazon right now, at least when I just checked. So that's less... <laughs> Than the 18 core. AMD's last gen 24 core 12 nanometer is cheaper than Intel's new 
rebrand, 18 core, 14 nanometer HDT chip. So there it is. If you're on a budget and you don't need gaming first, last gen Threadripper is there. And if you're somebody like me, where you do game a lot, where gaming does certainly matter for you, uh, and you know, I like the responsiveness of shall we say, gaming-able processors, the low latency and the quick throughput with certain apps, then there is an answer for you. It's called the 3950X, and it only has a 105-watt TDP. This quote-unquote little chip here is AMD's newest 16-core. And I know, you can't brag about getting a Threadripper if you get this, but here's what the facts are. In 2017, AMD launched a 16-core for $1,000. In 2018, they launched a 16-core for $900. Now they're launching a 16-core for $700. 150, and it's stronger than the previous generation 16 core. And this one only requires dual channel memory. You can save a bit more money than a Threadripper platform. And to be honest, based on what we can tell from a leaked Cascade Lake X review, Cascade Lake X, Intel's are what what they're arguing is a budget alternative to AMD, can't even seem to stay much ahead of the 3900X. The 3950X is going to be right here. It will be cheaper, it will use less energy, and its platform will probably be about the same price as Intel's X299X. This is the gaming creator hybrid chip. Most, you know, even a lot of creator apps don't use more than 16 threads. So guys, this is your choice, even if you can't brag about being a thread ripper. And you know what? While we're on that subject, this is why I really laugh at these articles I see saying Intel's Cascade Lake X squares off with Threadripper. It's not going to square off with anything but last-gen products. For the love of God, Intel's Cascade Lake X will be lucky to match AMD's AM4 products that are using half the energy and that's nothing to say for the fact that they won't even come close to in many professional applications to amd's last gen hdt platform so intel isn't in second place it's not in third place it's in fourth place amd didn't need to launch the new threadripper lineup but they did and this is a victory lap around the competition and Comet Lake's not going to put a dent in this at all. Launching two more cores won't even put you into parity with the 3900X, which by the time Comet Lake comes out, as again, I've reported Comet Lake on desktop has been delayed a quarter, so it's coming at best mid-2020. By then, the 3900X will almost have been out for a year. They can drop that to $400, and in fact, they can launch a speed refresh in quarter one or two next year. You know, the 3920X, you know, maybe a 4.7, 4.8 gigahertz 12 core instead of what they have now to completely head off Comet Lake X. And within a couple quarters, Zen 3 then drops, and that should be at least 20% better performance per watt than what we have now from AMD. This is going to be a dark 2020 for Intel. The good news is this, AMD is going to continue to manufacture 14 nanometer Zen 1 for their existing Epic contracts for a couple more years. That means that they're not going to throw away X399 for a while and those prices should come down. Also, monolithic chips, especially on the old 12 nanometer FinFET at Global Foundries, is dirt cheap to manufacture. So they'll probably keep making Zen Plus Threadrippers too, at least for another year. I don't see them getting rid of that for a while. So ex I expect that 24 core last gen Threadripper to slowly drift closer to the 3950X's price, if not a little cheaper. The 32 core version will probably drift down to about 1,000. And there you go. If you predominantly do uh, rendering and you just need a bunch of cores and gaming comes second or third, Zen Plus is better than anything Intel has. And a few years ago, it cost $1,700 for a 10 core Broadwell E. Can't complain too much if it becomes $1,000 for last gen 32 cores, can you? Give it some time for applications to catch up too. From what I've been told, you really shouldn't expect the 3950X to be that much better than the 3900X at most things, most applications, even professional ones, start hitting diminishing returns at about 12 cores 10 to 12 cores so even if you get a 16 core this is wildly more than you 
need for almost anything you're actually going to use this for. And unlike previous gen Threadrippers, the 3950X actually games incredibly well. We're spoiled now. And you know what? I wasn't even sure if AMD was going to do a victory lap and launch a Threadripper this gen. I really thought they might wait till Zen 3 to update Threadripper. But they didn't. So, good job, AMD. You deserve a victory lap after all of this hard work iterating every year. And try to get one more big lap in in 2020, right? I feel like that you really want to go for the kill one more time before Intel starts firing howitzers again in late 2021. Good luck, and thank you to everyone who watched. Share it if you liked it. Consider supporting me on Patreon, and of course, listen to Broken Silicon. All right, thank you. <laughs>